I get to be me now, and you get to be you. Heck yeah. Lots of love. And remember, we are about finding our own personal identity and being true to ourselves. So at the fifth stage, which is where I'm at in this dysfunctional family, um, I'm saying yes to myself and to healthy boundaries. And I know what I will and will not do. Let's see, I was talking earlier about morals and values. And really uh, asking for somebody's morals and values is asking for their ethics essentially. So moral may be opposed to immoral and applying conformity to a standard of what is good and right, or it may contrast with intellectual or aesthetic as being concerned with character or conduct rather than achievement, beauty, success, and logical perfection. So you see the moral of the story my brother is a noble soul. It implies, uh, noble, implies moral eminence <clears throat> and freedom from anything petty, mean, dubious, in conduct and character. Moral may be opposed to the immoral because it is concerned with the character or the conduct of a human, rather than their achievements, their beauty, success, or perceived success, and logical perfection. <clears throat> That's what we're dealing with here. We're healing after 66.6 .6 years. <laughs> so much to say. I was the invisible child. 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 So in the fifth stage, you fawn because you haven't differentiated yet. And so really, I've been ruminating over my lost youth ever since August 2022, y'all. And uh, in the fifth stage, that's where we find one's own personal identity. And that's where we are truly true to ourselves, but you cannot do that as a child of a narcissist. So in reparenting yourself, you have to discover what the fifth stage is. And so, and the author says here, I had avoided the fifth stage in order to feel my insatiable appetite for intimacy and love. Of course, you were a love-starved child. You were looking for it from an unemotionally available male. If you had the misfortune of choosing narcissistic partners like myself, if you just have a guy that doesn't know anything more than what he's been taught, but he's harmless, you can work together to have a more enriching life. I'm not saying all men are bad men. I'm just saying the narcissistic ones are. Just like not all women are toxic that don't want to have relationships, guys. They don't want to have a relationship. <sighs> Women who have healed themselves or are healing and no longer want to live in the dysfunction. So that's where I'm at. Um, it's important that you do you. Because when I was in relationship, I gave more time and energy to the relationship and less and less to myself. And it was actually um, part of the condition of being in the relationship. Many a woman makes it a goal to know her man without knowing herself first. She sees loving him as a solution to her problems, but love soon becomes the center of her problem. She is thinking rather than feeling her way through the relationship and eventually becomes isolated from the very essence of herself. That is tragedy. 
when you are healing from the narcissistic abuse, you reach, you realize this, that's the peak, that's the, that's your Mount Everest. You realize what you've actually been dealing with, okay? When you are healing from the narcissistic abuse, you reach, you realize this, that's the peak, that's the, that's your Mount Everest. You realize what you've actually been dealing with, okay? You realize what you've actually been dealing with, okay? But then you have to go through the death zone and the death zone is killing off the, all the old ideas that somebody did something to you. Remember, now you're wise and they no longer can. So go back and pick up that little girl back there. Go back and get the, uh, the little girl back there and bring her into the now. And she's the one that wasn't able to develop her talents and skills. And mine was as a author, a writer. And yes, even a dancer. When you are willing to pull back and look at your neglected dreams and fallibles, you may bring a newfound energy into yourself, into your life. You learn to respect what makes you an individual. And therefore you can also accept everyone else's quirks with acceptance rather than judgment as they judge you. It's so simple. I'm in the fifth stage. I am doing what it is I need to be, which is find my own personal identity and being true to myself. And so the sixth stage is where you find your intimacy and your love. But if you haven't learned at the fifth stage to actually have an identity, to actually truly be true to yourself, then you can't, you're only bringing a broken person into the sixth stage. That's where the fifth stage is where we broke. Know yourself to thy own self be true. Mutuality, you're the measurements, girls. <clears throat> mutuality, reciprocity, interdependence, but first you have to start with inner dependence. Interdependence are the keys to the game of, of a relationship. If you don't have them, what's the point? So it, <clears throat> in a narcissistic re abusive relationship, there is no mutuality. There's caving into what they want. There is no pre reciprocity as you give, 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 and then they want more. Uh, there is no interdependence. There can be a codependence as you become trauma bonded to the game, which is the horror show. It's not this, it's this not so fun house. It's the terror room you want to get out of. It's the haunted mansion of everybody's ghosts. But this person is so unwilling to look at themselves. They shove all their bad feelings onto you. And so all that anger and stuff as their partner, you feel. That's why so many women are uh, actually um, dealing with uh, illnesses if they stay too long in a relationship. Here's the book. Um, I'm gonna stitch this into my uh, own personal diary uh, and iMovie making. But in the meantime, I recommend this book um, and it's by the author of A Year by the Sea and An Unfinished Marriage. She's really quite incredible. And the ISBN is, oh gosh, 07 679 I'll say that again. ISBN is zero, but then they have a dash. 7679 and a dash 1475 and a dash nine. And Eric Erickson is the person who uh, was the cr creator of the eight stages of childhood development. Joan was his wife. So there's a photograph of her on page whatever. All right, let's go look for it. There's that. Because this, this is just a book cover. A picture of her. Where is she? There she is. 
So enjoy. I'm from this neck of the woods, Cape Cod and all that. So, is there anything else I had put in here as important to show you? We'll get to that. But right now, the most important thing is what I've been talking about, the fifth stage, okay? It's here we become independent, or also where we became impaired because of our narcissistic abuse from our mother who kept pulling the rug out from underneath us, upstaging us, moving us over so she could be in the center of the drama. She always controlled the show. And in fact, all conversations were dominated by her. And when she left the room to pee, it was a relief. But when she came back, she immediately took over. So now that's where I'm at. And that's where you all should be who missed the fifth stage of Eric Erickson's Eight Stages of Development. Check it out. You gotta love yourself before you can love anybody else. But first you have to allow yourself to be yourself. And as I say so often to my viewers, um, I get to be me now and you get to be you. Heck yeah. Lots of love. And remember, we are about finding our own personal identity and being true to ourselves. Greetings, everyone. My channel will be taking a little different turn. There is a well-known phenomena challenge, if you will, for all people who have actually made the peak of Mount Everest. Getting to the top is only half the challenge. Getting to the top is only half the challenge. If you want to live, you also have to climb back down. Wow. Did you get that one Climbing Mount Everest, meaning finding out you're from a narcissistically abusive, dysfunctional family, and that's why you picked really, really inappropriate partners, but they were appropriate for you to learn what you needed to learn. They were appropriate for me to learn what I needed to learn. And now I'm better off because of it. But it's been hard. So I'm climbing back down from the peak of my personal Mount Everest, which is recognizing that I'm a child of a narcissistic family structure with a narcissistic mother and an enabling father who doesn't seem to have his own will to assert. And my parents are still alive, but they're there, there's, there's a story here. There they are. Validation is an inside job and is very challenging in a world like we have today without having been in a narcissistic family structure. However, the more I look into this world of ours, the more I am actually going to theorize that narcissists and narcissistic abuse is far more prevalent than previously realized. So pull up a cup of cuppa. We're going to have a talk and it's about how to get down from Mount Everest alive. So you climbed the mountain. You realized the bull crap that you've been dealing with. What next? What next is you have to reparent yourself. You have to go through a reparenting structure that floats your boat. I give myself permission to be a work in progress. Cheers to that, everybody. Cheers to that. <laughs> values. What are values? Before I knew what morals and values were, my pathologically narcissistic mother who just so happened to have gotten her master's degree in guidance and counseling. My theory was so she'd know exactly what to say to F us up at whatever stage of development we were in. 
You said to me when I was a high school student, when no other siblings were around, and she said it admonishingly. She said it with this sort of attitude. Kathleen, what are your morals and values? She didn't demonstrate what they were. She didn't let me know what hers were. Yeah, You have to have morals and values. You cannot live your life without morals and values. Well, she didn't tell me what morals and values were. She didn't demonstrate what a parent would, what a moral or a value was, nor did she tell me what hers were. Instead, she asked me, demanded of me that I tell her what my morals and values were. And in my recollection, I did what I wisely uh, did as default to any of her questions, which I knew would then turn into arguments. Not only would they turn into arguments, they would turn into verbal uh, abuse. She would then pick apart what my morals were. She would then pick apart what my values were. So I chose to keep it buttoned up and not say anything. So I now am at a place of what are my values? This has put the morals aside. I value beauty in the form of nature. I have picked up trash in my neighborhood just because I value the appearance of the natural beauty as opposed to the garbage. So I have picked up garbage. I gloved up and picked up the, the garbage. And I value the opportunity I have to climb down off of Mount Everest, my Mount Everest, and to then do the hard work, the heavy lifting of getting back down to base camp. What was the base of my being before it got derailed? Well, I'm learning that I did not have value in myself. I wasn't valued for me. I wasn't valued for what I actually was. I was valued only in what I could do for this person. Her. That person right there. This. That. That creature. Who probably came from, in my sci-fi theory, the planet that blew itself up. Because can you imagine a planet of narcissists? <laughs> because they would rather destroy anything and everything than for somebody else to have it. They would rather see you have a terrible life so that they can feel better about themselves and then for you to have a good life so that they could be happy for you. I value myself. So you have to learn how to value yourself since nobody else is going to. Uh, you have to learn how to validate yourself because if you're in a narcissistic family structure, they're not going to do it, especially if they ha are getting something out of their position. Who am I really before I was undefined, mismanaged by an abusive narcissist? And then yes, lo and behold, I went on to be with abusive men. They don't start off that way, but because of my conditioning to always acquiesce, to always make nice, to always make good, because I valued peace over getting my own way, I stuck with these men who disrespected me, insulted me unnecessarily, because I was always trying to improve. Oh, maybe I could be a better person. They're not happy. Maybe there's something I could do to make things better. And I once thought, hmm, am I codependent? Well, no, I wasn't codependent. I was trauma bonded. I am at this wonderful peak of personal understanding of putting value back into me. I've got myself to answer to. 
And I am in this school of life now, free from an abusive teacher. What happens with people in the death zone on Mount Everest, they have the lack of oxygen. If they have hypothermia, they start hallucinating. Narcissistic abuse escapees, people who have finally realized what they have been in their entire life. And I once thought, hmm, am I codependent? Well, no, I wasn't codependent. I was trauma bonded. I was trauma bonded, trauma bonded. Mutuality, they're the measurements, girls. <clears throat> Mutuality, reciprocity, interdependence, but first you have to start with inner dependence. Interdependence are the keys to the game of, of a relationship. If you don't have them, what's the point? So it, <clears throat> in a narcissistic Re abusive relationship there is no mutuality there's caving into what they want there is no pre reciprocity as you give 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 and then they want more uh there is no interdependence there can be a codependence as you become trauma bonded to the game which is the horror show it's not this it's this not so fun house it's the terror room you want to get out of it's the haunted mansion of everybody's ghosts Here's the concept. Climbing Mount Everest, meaning finding out you're from a narcissistically abusive, dysfunctional family, and that's why you pick really, really inappropriate partners, but they were appropriate for you to learn what you needed to learn. They were appropriate for me to learn what I needed to learn. And now I'm better off because of it. But it's been hard as recovering adult children of narcissistic abuse, who then went on to be with abusive partners, who then are abused by others who blame them for picking those partners, who then throw insults at them, telling them they are the ones that must be the problem. The abuse doesn't stop, but because I value myself, I weed my garden just as much as I pick up the trash. And so when some trashy comment is somewhere in the comment section on my channel, on my YouTube channel, I will simply remove it. Rather than putting on my kid gloves and saying, what do you mean by that asshole? It's just like, huh, look at that person disagreeing with me with an insult. Oh, such a classic narcissistic move or toxic move. If they call you a name, if they judge you, if you disagree with them and say, let's agree to disagree, but then they then tell you that you don't have the ability to see things the way they do. Weed them. <laughs> Get rid of them. They're not important. It's so much fun to be able to go, ah, I see where my values are. My values are in being around top-notch people who, whether they agree with you or disagree with you, are able to maintain a professional attitude of and positive communication. Now, positive communication was not something I learned from my narcissistic mother, nor from my father, who didn't communicate very effectively. So I'm currently climbing down, going through the dead zone of my personal Mount Everest. So, where are you in your journey? Where are you in your life? You know, recovery takes a long time. It's not an overnight thing. And that's something I'm giving myself um, carte blanche, if you will, to take the amount of time I need to do the healing I need to do. But here's the deal. Self-acceptance, radical self-acceptance, self-forgiveness to yourself, 
And you do not have to forgive your NARD parents. You don't. Know what they did. Know you're never going to be validated. They're never going to say to you, oh my God, did we ever mess up? Boy, do we mismanage you. They're never going to say that. These toxic people cannot, cannot add their two cents worth in the comment section without insulting you. But what does that do for me? It gives me the opportunity to throw out the trash. Yes. You can disagree with a person, but why this ill will? Why? Why? Because they're not right in the head. That's a toxic man. Um, I don't wish anything terrible onto these people. That's evil. That's evil. And this one toxic man, I was like, ah, oh, project much? You may be single and depressed. He goes, no, I'm happily married with five sons. And I'm thinking to myself, happily married with five sons? I wonder what his wife says. Hmm, happily married with five sons. Well, what are you doing on a woman's channel who's actually saying information for people who have escaped narcissistic abuse? Women that are happier because we got away from narcissistically abusive relationships and there is a huge chunk of missing healthy people in our society and it's better to live a humble existence alone than with more abuse from somebody who hasn't done their Mount Everest, who hasn't climbed down through the dead zone, who hasn't done the challenges of getting to their own base camp. And then you can celebrate. Hmm? Yeah? I make a lot of sense, don't I? Yeah, I know I do. <laughs> um, I love men. I do. But do I want one in my life permanently at this point in time? No, because I'm in the dead zone. Save yourself first. I am at this wonderful peak of personal understanding of putting value back into me. I have parents who are aging, but my, gold, my uh, the golden child sister, who I love, who should not misunderstand my labeling of her. It's the fact she's the golden child. She didn't have it as hard as us, but she had it difficult and challenging in another way. These toxic people cannot, cannot add their two cents worth in the comment section without insulting you. But what does that do for me? It gives me the opportunity to throw out the trash. Yes. So cheers to that, everybody. Go through the trash in your life and in your mind. Get rid of it. And what are my values? I value a beautiful existence with value in it that people who know me and love me listen to what I have to say, offer their information so that they then allow me to listen and empathize with them to understand what they are going through, to be able to be privy to their joys as well as their trials. So that's what life's all about, Charlie Brown. To be a good human, to be a kind person without being a doormat. Yeah. Okay, Mwah. have a great day. Be able to create the life you want, knowing the hazards, especially the ones that have been ingrained in here. Negative self-talk. You have to learn to shut it up. Shut up. Go count the hairs on the cat. Go count the fibers in the rug. 
poof, they go away. Just like those negative comments on YouTube. Well, <laughs> I recently thought about it and I thought to myself, there are people who have been through difficulties and they end up healing. And then there are people who have been through difficulties and they end up breaking forever. And I'm discovering that no matter what, and no matter how much I may love a person who has gone through difficulties, it's possible that that person may never, ever, ever heal. When you are willing to pull back and look at your neglected dreams and fallibles, you may bring a newfound energy into yourself, into your life. You learn to respect what makes you an individual, and therefore you can also accept everyone else's quirks with acceptance rather than judgment. But you can't actually do anything about a nurse, pathological narcissist other than basically allow them <laughs> to self-destruct. <laughs> which they will inevitably do. <laughs> Connect to nature, people.